Teaching remotely in the spring of 2020 was tough. So I was thrilled when I found out that schools in my area would be open for in-person learning in the fall. But I knew that I would see a lot of learning loss due to the pandemic. There would be large gaps in my students' knowledge. And there was. These second graders had already missed so much school, and then we started year on a hybrid schedule. So my class was divided in half, and each half came twice a week, and then they worked remotely the other three. So I knew I had to make the most of every minute I had with my students in person. Bell-to-bell learning would be essential. And it is something I already had a lot of practice with since I was teaching half-day kindergarten the year before. And so I had a lot of practice with cramming a lot of information and activities in a short amount of time. A couple months into the year, my district switched gears and we had all students come four days a week and we only taught remotely one day a week. But still, I needed I knew I needed to maximize our instruction. And so this became my motto teach the stuff and cut the fluff. Um, I knew I needed to make the most of every second. And I knew that I had been learning so much about the science of reading that making sure to apply that in my classroom will help, would help my students soar. So I made sure I had a solid phonics program and could provide explicit systematic phonics instruction for my students, making sure that we would leave nothing to chance. Incorporating games to review and practice our skills alongside the explicit instruction was a great way to keep students engaged. A great warm-up to our phonics instruction was spending a few minutes on phonemic awareness activities. And then in small group, I could really target um, students on their individual needs in this area and provide proper intervention. And of course, I couldn't neglect the language comprehension strand of Scarborough's Reading Rope. So I read complex and engaging texts to my students and with my students, helping them develop their background knowledge and their vocabulary skills. We engaged in conversations surrounding what we were reading and learning and learned some comprehension strategies like questioning, summarizing, clarifying, and predicting. Vocabulary is an area that I really wanted to improve. So I loved being able to apply some of the things I had learned from Dr. Deb Glazer's Top 10 Tools Professional Development course. I love reading and I love providing good books for my students. So I made sure I had everything from high quality decodable readers for those who needed them to regular trade books. I gave my students lots and lots of opportunities for good practice. And one of my favorite times is small group instruction when I can have students right there at the small group table with me and listen to each one read and really get to know them as readers and really get to know the things that they need to work on and the things they're great at and how I can help them further. We had lots of opportunities to practice our fluency. We did this in whole group. We did this in partners. We did this in small group. And in small group is when I could practice one-on-one with them on this. And then additionally, it was important for me to have everyone have access to grade level text. So with appropriate scaffolding, this can be done. Anytime we did independent reading in the classroom, all students had the choice to read a regular book or to listen to an audiobook, and they could follow along as they listened to the audiobook. And this was a great way for all my students to have access to grade level content, background knowledge, and vocabulary. I had so much fun teaching writing this year, and especially coming from teaching kindergarten the year before to now teaching second grade, it was so fun just to see what these students were capable of, especially with explicit writing instruction. And so um, you can see this sample here where there are some beautiful dependent clauses in here, and all of my students were working on that and doing amazingly. So it was so rewarding to see uh, how far they came with their writing. There's always so much more to learn and I'm always finding ways that I can improve my instruction. So I got a couple new books this year and I started letters training. And I love listening to high quality podcasts and this is one of my favorites. So even with all the COVID restrictions and challenges this year, did the science of reading work? How did my students do? The answer is a resounding yes. By the end of the year, 57% of my students scored above, well above, typical progress on their Acadians benchmark measures, and 19% were above, and about 23% were at typical progress. I had no students that were below or well below typical progress, even during this pandemic year. I love learning and applying effective literacy instruction in my classroom, and I hope that this video inspires you to start applying the science of reading in your classroom.